What's going on everyone? Welcome back to T3G. My name is Dolly Border and today we're looking at Microsoft's new video editor. Coming up. Whatever it is that you do, do the damn thing. Now the app we're talking about is ClipChamp. It is most likely pre-installed if you have a new computer or a new Windows installation, especially Windows 11. However, if you do not have it, or if you have Windows 10, open up the Microsoft Store. It'll most likely be on the first page. Otherwise, you could always just look for it. ClipChamp, boom. Bit of an embarrassingly slow search there, Microsoft, but <laughs> there it is right at the top here. Mine says open because I already own it. If you don't, uh, you will just be able to click get. And when it first opens up, you are going to have the right behind my picture here. There is an upgrade button. You can purchase it for some more stock footage and filters and effects and stuff like that. Uh, you could also have a brand identity, which is cool because you can have colors, logos and fonts. Uh, and you could have uh, automatic content backup, so you could actually edit on multiple computers, like automatically, as in you could just open ClipChamp on another device and it'll already just be there. But the free version still has a ton of really good features. Now, a few things I want to point out here on the homepage. Right in the middle here, you're going to see Get Inspired with a Template. So you could actually just start with a template pre-built for social media or Instagram or YouTube, which are all social media, but this is, I guess this one's specifically for ads, but it'll probably just work as a regular template as well. Uh, news events and holidays, things like that. Like you have these templates that you can build from and you can hit all templates and see everything that's available. Uh, some things I'm sure are going to be premium. Uh, usually there's a little, let's see. Hmm. Are these all free? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Usually uh, the premium stuff has like a little, little asterisk or whatever, the little diamond. So you got a bunch of different options here. I'm not seeing any premium ones, but I'm sure there are premium ones that cost money. But hey, look, this is already really solid options for starting out. The other thing I want to talk about here is the fact that you have two options right at the top. You have create a new video and that's going to be your standard video editing or record something. This is actually something that you can access anytime, even when you're already editing a video, a few different ways you can record uh, text to speech, screen recording, straight camera recording. It's something you can use to create a cut in. So if you've got a video and you're like, oh man, I forgot to do an outro, you could just record it real quick with your webcam or you could just straight up record a podcast using that. And then on the bottom here, I wanted to talk about, even though it says you don't have automatic cloud backup, I think that is only for the files because this, this video is something that I started on a completely different computer when I was first playing around with this app. So it seems like your actual working file is synced across your account. So you could just pick it up as long as you have your files. So let's say if you're working off an external drive, which I am on record saying that you shouldn't, but I'm just saying should be able to just pick up where you left off. And then on the side, here real quick your settings are going to be just your billing stuff i'm not going to open it because it's got my email and things like that your brand kit is important because if you do upgrade and set up a brand kit this is going to be simple because all your colors are going to be available across all videos that you make all your logos all your fonts they're all there and they're across all your devices so that's kind of cool uh, but again if you're just starting out that's not necessary so this is actually the third time i'm recording this video for various reasons uh, but let's just go ahead and take a look at this video that i've been playing around with this evening want to talk about a few things inside the actual editor First of all, right now, I'm editing. If I hit play, you're gonna hear audio. This song came in from this right here. Went free to use, found it, was this right here, new EDM song, or now EDM song, and I just dragged it in, it downloaded in a few seconds, boom, there it was. This is an overlay graphic, tons to choose from here. You can even pull from Giphy, which is wild. Like, hold on, hold on, let's see, search pick up, yeah. That's what, yes, that's super cool. Not, you, yeah, terms of use, you know, make sure you follow terms of use, but that's cool. Like if you're just making fun stuff for social media, you can toss in these memes that are on Giphy. That's super cool. I didn't even think about that. you got your media. It's drag and drop, just like any other editor. If you don't have the premium plan, it's going to tell you that your media is not backed up. That's irrelevant if you're working from local files anyway. On the left side here, you got other templates that you could just pop in. You've got music and sound effects. Like I said, you've got stock video that you could throw in. Obviously, free to use is going to probably be a little more limited. Uh, but still, you, you'd be able to pull in some free to use stuff. And you I mean, you could potentially make a whole video without ever showing your face or ever recording anything. That's cool. I might use that for something. I have ideas. Can we, can we favorite this? Not add to timeline. Can I? Hmm. I mean, whatever. I'm just going to add it to my media. Look, 
That was quick. Granted, it's only 14 seconds, but that was quick. You've got stock images, of course, text options. Some of these are animated. Look at that. Boom, by out. Groovy. They little pull in. Make it glow. I like that one. That one's cool. Smoke. Ooh, I like that. That's cool. Typewriter, always good for some vlog or some travel footage. As I was mentioning, uh, your stock video options will be indicated because this one says free. This one has a little diamond upgrade. But honestly, with all of these YouTubers pitching XYZ platform where you can get your stock footage, where you can get your sound effects for what was it, 12 bucks a month, that's not bad to get a bunch of stock footage and to get a bunch of sound effects and to get a bunch of music that you can just use. That's not bad at all. I think if, I think if you're starting up, this might actually be the best deal around. We might do a deep dive into their music library to see kind of what options there are, see quality, but honestly, so far from a few songs that I've heard, pretty dang good. I think the only other thing we haven't talked about on here is transitions. We will touch those in a minute when we get to it in the video here. Looking at the editing space, we can, we can shrink this. That doesn't need to be there. Let's see the whole thing in its full glory. Looking at the editing space, it's very simple. It's very straightforward, but it works. That's the important part for me here, honestly. This is, this is the video, right? You've got sizing options right there on the screen. You can play, you can rewind. You also got crop options. You've got rotation options, all this stuff that's kind of pre-built for you. You can fill. So let's say I'm like, oh man, you don't want to do this. You know what? Never mind. I'm going to fit it in. Boom. Super quick. It's very intuitive and I appreciate it. If you're editing and you're like, hey, I want to cut this piece off. You've got the split tool here, or you can just hit S on your keyboard. Pretty straightforward. Of course, that's going to apply to the track that you're selecting. You've got zoom options over here, or you can also zoom to fit. Uh, zooming is also possible through control and scroll. And I'm sure, you know, pinch options on track pads. You've got a duplicate button or you can control D to duplicate if you need to do any kind of overlays or anything like that. And then on the right for all of your tracks, everything over here is contextual. So for instance, right now we're in the video, we're going to go to the audio. I can adjust the audio for this video track specifically, where I can detach the audio and that will actually create a separate audio file, which actually also downloads into your export folder, which we will talk about in a minute. It does create the full audio file from the full clip. Cause I've already modified the length of this clip. It attaches the full clips audio, which is something to keep in mind. So if you are doing that and you want to just adjust the audio that way, you will have to be aware of that. So then again, on the right, we have fade options so we could fade in. So let's say boom right here, go to the front, fade in a little bit. It's nice because it's super simple, super straightforward. You've got filter options. That's how, that's why it looks orange. The original video looked like this. You could do tons of things here. I want to do some crazy, crazy stuff here. Oh, that even moves. Stop it. Stop it. Come on, come on, come on. I'm just saying. For, for free, for free, it's pretty dang solid. You can adjust colors, you can adjust temperature, you can adjust contrast. You can actually even change blend modes. So again, if you duplicate something, you put something on top, you can change the blend modes and you can even change opacity. You can retime. If, if it is a video clip, you can retime the video clip. You can slow it down or you can speed it up. And then of course, when you add the next clip, what do you wanna do? Do you want it to be a standard, boring transition no no you're gonna go over into transitions and you're gonna pick a transition you're gonna drop that bad boy right in the middle here and then if you you don't like that one you can switch it up right so then when you go so that one feels a little too short it's a quarter second let's push it out to about 175 so it's kind of nice right kind of nice and uh did i mention it's free it's fire let's fire let's fire I would like to have this one be maybe a little, little faster. So we pull that back, so right? So Boom, right there. It, you see that a little bit of buffering, right? It's not the fastest thing in the world. It doesn't use all the cores. I'm editing here, I'm using transitions and I'm recording on my computer. The fan's not spinning up, you know, it's not maximizing the output of your computer. This thing is meant to be kind of used on all devices. I'll be honest, when I first tried it out, I tried it out at work, eight gigs of RAM, and I think they're i5s, maybe, like old i5s, they're old computers, okay? We need upgrades. The point is, it doesn't require a lot of power to do this, it doesn't require a lot of power to edit or render. Let's go ahead and run an export real quick and we'll talk about the options. First, you've got 480p for drafts, you got some social media stuff at 720, 1080 full res, or GIFs, for anything under 15 seconds, you can just make a GIF, which is cool. We're gonna go with 1080p, now it's got some transitions. Obviously, it's eight seconds or whatever. 
it sh- you know it should be faster but at the same time you see where it's slowing down it's slowing down at the transition because that's the part that requires the most hardware to render outside of that this is standard i did a little color correction on this one nothing nothing too crazy and it runs through you've got some save options you've got some upload options on this the only thing is this right here at the end where this saves is your browser's default download location that's the only thing that i'm hoping they will change in a future version because that's kind of a bummer uh because you know you download stuff all the time i don't want to lose my video file in my download folder that's silly this is the one thing i honestly wish that they will change in a future version this is a company that was bought out by microsoft end of last year they were a com- they, this this started as like a browser extension, I think, in early 2020. I think this was a good buy for them. The built-in editor in Windows 10 and even worse in Windows 11 is not great. It's, it's, it's very, very poor. It's super basic, like worse than your Photos app on your phone basic. So I'm glad that they took a step to get themselves some sort of decent editor. And honestly, I, I think they, I think they hit it out of the park with this. This is the best choice they could have made. It has kind of all of the things that are popular right now with editing built in at the cheapest price that you could get. So if you wanted to upgrade, but you don't need to, there's no restrictions. You can export as much as you want. There is no restriction for basic use. You just won't have those extra clips and and sound effects and things like that. Overall, I am very, very impressed. I may actually prefer using this over DaVinci on my laptop when I edit, um, just because it's lo- less intensive, right? Rendering might be faster in DaVinci, but that's not the part I spend the most doing, right? I want to be able to edit as quickly as possible with the least amount of resistance from the system. The render, I can put it down and walk away and go do something while it renders out on the laptop. You know what I mean? Like I would rather rendering took longer than editing was slow and and buggy and DaVinci does not like laptops so far in my experience. I'm going to be doing another January experiment with my Surface Book, which is a couple generations old at this point. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I may actually end up just using this instead. All right, that's going to be it. If you have any questions about the video editor, please drop them down below. Of course, I love to check out new software. So if you have any other recommendations for free video editors. I have some ideas about what to do with this series, but we'll talk about that next year. I've got several more videos to come out this year, so make sure you are subscribed. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.